The night is dark and full of terrors. What are you looking at? All right, what's going on everybody? This is your pad check word again with another installment of the Game of Thrones walkthrough for Straight Down the Middle Pinball. Um, tonight, as you can see on the screen, we're gonna go over um, all the houses. So choosing houses at the beginning of the game, what that means, what their different abilities slash strategies are, and we're gonna go through each house one by one and kind of uh, go down a few different things. Um, one, what would be the advantages of choosing that house um, that the game gives you. Um, then we're going to go into strategies for using that house to scoring big in the game. And then um, at the end, we'll, uh, once we get through all the houses, we'll just kind of discuss what everybody um, feels is the best house uh, they like to choose when, um, when trying to blow the game up. Um, so I guess my goal tonight would be to try and give everyone a good sense of how to score big with every house, not just uh, choosing Martell or maybe um, Tyrell or Greyjoy like uh, most people will pick. Um, you should be able to blow the game up with pretty much any house. Um, you'll see that some it's going to be harder than others, but um, yeah, with all the other stuff we've learned, it shouldn't matter which house you pick. Uh, if you put put some of the skills we've learned to, uh, to task, you should be able to blow it up with any house you pick. Alright, so we're just going to go in order of the shield down here. So we're going to start with Stark and then kind of go through them all. But um, So for Stark, the advantages you get for picking Stark. As you can see on the screen it says increase winner is coming. Meaning when you do your winners coming hurry ups while playing as House Stark, the base value of those start out at a much higher value than normal. As you remember from our last uh, time, it takes the winners coming hurry ups from around six to eight million to 16 to 18 million so much much higher so as you can imagine if you have a big multiplied winner is coming hurry up as house stark it's going to be worth much much more than if you don't pick house stark so that's what we're going to concentrate on uh now by picking stark is we're going to go right in to try and set up some really big winner is coming hurry ups and and we'll see how um, how high we can get those and maybe get into a uh, winner's come multi-ball and Baratheon, have it pay off. Baratheon, so, House all right, Martel, let's get after Star. it. Oh, bad short plunge. So again, what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to set up some winner's coming hurry-ups. So... If you remember from our last time, you want to ice over those house shots. So I'm one shot away from Greyjoy being iced over. So okay, so now that's iced over. So we got one more shot we can start a hurry up at. And we don't need to be hitting the same shot. Um. Over and over again to get the winners uh, coming hurry up going. We can advance to it by hitting any iced over shot. But to hear more about that kind of jazz, uh, go back and watch part three and you'll find out all about winners coming hurry ups. Okay. Um, 
One thing to remember too. Oh damn it. You can use your um, your instant info to see where your winner's coming hurry up progress is at if you forget. So we need two more shots to start it. So I'm gonna try and get some multipliers going here and set up a set up a a big collect on the right ramp. That's my favorite one to um, set up is the right ramp. You're playing a bit rough. Couple dangers there. Stay in. Oh boy. Yeah. Um, around the house somewhere. I'm not sure. You're welcome. Okay, so it might not get too far with this first Stark run, but we're going to go and uh, take swings at all these houses a handful of times, just so I can try and show you um, what you can do with each one. Okay, so we got a multiplier going. Let's hit some ramps here. Get our shot multipliers going. practice game. So as you can see, some of these scoring strategies aren't for the faint of heart, but um, try a different way this time. Let's get our play field multiplier going right away. So the key to getting a big winner is coming hurry up collect at least, you want to get at least one. Uh, in between 100 and 200 million because in that way when you get to the winners come multi-ball that super jackpot's worth a hell of a lot more so a, an easy way I've found to do that well easier way is to have Stark ramp ready to go to have the hurry up and then try and multiply it by as much as you can when you go to collect it now the best way to do that is is to start it at the right ramp lock your ball so you see I have my lock lit then use your play field validation to have all the timers frozen and your hurry up um, frozen at a really high value then you can catch the ball back on your right flipper take your time and then collect that multiplied shot crikey so as you can see not the safest strategy in the world but it's definitely um, definitely one that can can pay off if you're dialed in on your shots I gotta get another lock lit to set this up, but and get a 2x play field on. There's the lock. Well, inadvertently getting closer to another house here, so that's good. Left. So right now I'm just trying to start that hurry up. Okay, one more shot. There we go. Oh! Alright, I think I lost a little bit of the hurry up, but that's okay. Remember, get your soft plunge going. Let it ride. Those multipliers aren't going to run out. The play field, I think, multiplier does not freeze. That's the only one. Get up there. Okay. So I got that multiplied by six. We saw that was worth 77 million. So that's a good start. So if we get four of those, not the easiest thing in the world, but you can kind of see where I'm going with that on our for our multi ball. We'll have a pretty big jackpot value built up. So I'm gonna pass on grass until we get to multi ball. And then it'll allow us to get more. Winter is coming. Hurry up, Skoa. Our wildfire's lit. So let's hit the battering ram because we're not gonna have to hit it as much. Remember we only have to hit it, we have to hit it one less time if wildfire's lit. Help if I didn't miss it. Okay. You're pushing your luck there. Okay, we got some more. 
iced over shots to deal with. I'm going to try and get one, another uh, hurry up started. Two shots left. Oh boy. Ooh, I might be dead. That's good. Okay, one more shot. I'm gonna get the ball back and restart my play field multiplier here. If I can hold it. I'm gonna wait till the 2x runs out and restart my timer. Okay, we wanna lock that other ball now. Oh, get up there. Alright. Oh, that was ball three. Shoot. That's okay. Uh, I want to try and collect that hurry up, though, before it runs out. There we go. Okay, that was another 6x. So you see another 78 million. So we're only halfway through our hurry up towards winner has come multi-ball. And we got a pretty good super jackpot value built up at 150 million. Restart our hurry ups. Or sorry, our playfield multiplier. That was a good backhand. Get up there. Ah. At least get a couple more hurt. Ah. Now we really want another winner's coming hurry up because we got all kinds of playfield multipliers going. So I'm gonna pass for now. Get up there. Oh, shoot. I was trying to set up another hurry up since we had this play field multipliers going, but that's okay. I think we're one or two shots away from our next hurry up, so let's see. Okay. So one more iced over shot and we'll have a third hurry up running. We want to get another iced over shot on the play field because you can see right here we only have, um, we, we've got two Starks collected. We need to collect one, two more hurry ups. So we got to get another house lit here. So I'm going to try and, uh, and pick off some Tyrell targets because that'll work us towards our next uh, multi-ball. So if anyone else likes to play... How Stark and has different ways of going about it that you would like to uh, discuss. Feel free, hit up the chat. And I'm all ears because I'm always looking for ways to uh, attack this game in different ways. So there's another ice server shot. And okay, so I'll, I'll explain to you what just happened there. So what happened was we only needed I only needed one more. Um, iced over shot completion to start a hurry up and what happened was there in one really quick swoop was I completed the Tyrell targets again when it was iced over it started the hurry up and then off a, a ricochet came back and hit the targets right away and collected the hurry up so now I'm down to my final hurry up which is the center ramp easiest one I'm gonna let's see am I on ball three I'm not gonna risk it I think I'm on ball three so I'm going to just try and collect this last hurry up, get into that winner has come, and, and, um, and see what we can do. And then after we get out of that, we'll kind of play the game like we normally would, because we can't get back into that multi-ball, even if, even if we wanted to, unless we get all the way through the game. So. so I haven't played any modes yet. I've played one multi-ball. I'm, I'm at about 500 million, which isn't terrible. So again, if you ever play a flaky game that... Uh, accidentally chooses your house for you and starts the first house that comes up on the game just remember stuff like this and you can kind of because I can guarantee you the tournament director is going to tell you to play on because that's just a minor malfunction the game selected your house for you sorry about your luck move on some guys might rule it differently but I know I wouldn't so um, just keep stuff in mind on how to keep something in your back pocket to know how to play each house so one more shot Okay. Okay, I gotta clear all our ice, our shots here in horde mode. There's a horde of white walkers coming at us. We gotta clear them all out. All right, we got 
the whole right side of the board left, which I'm terrible at. <laughs> so we'll see if we can't get these picked off here. Ah! Every time I need that right ramp badly, I can't seem to hit it. Not sure how I got the Atta Ball, but I believe it was from a, a random pop up reward, so. Oh boy. There we go. Okay, now we gotta complete five shots. Five lit shots. There's one. Ah, we're dead. So, as you can see, that multi ball isn't the easiest to get to a big payoff, kind of like Hand of the King. But, at the same time, just think of it as another Hand of the King. Just one more opportunity to get a big payoff. Hey, what's up, Ronald? What's up, Greg? Uh, one thing we haven't talked about yet is um, how to light the Mystery Awards. Um, and that's pretty simple. There's really not much there. There's just there's five gold targets. And they're in between all the shots. You, you can see I have two of them lit right now. If I hit the other one, the other three, it'll light mystery. Each time you hit one of those targets, you're collecting gold. Uh, when you go into your mystery uh, select at the dragon, however much gold you have on you will will change the uh, the mystery awards you can pick from. One's random. The other one is based off how much gold you have, I think. So um, you can either pass on choosing something or choose something and spend gold on it. Uh, obviously, if you choose to pass, you can keep building up your gold, and then the higher your gold gets, the bigger the value. If you want to see what all those uh, mystery award possibilities are, for depending on what how much gold you have, there's a really good uh, uh, rule sheet on Tilt Forums. So just search the Game of Thrones rule sheet there, and it'll show you all the mystery awards that you can buy out of mystery. So, all right. So I think we have one lock towards our next multi ball. We're sitting on an extra ball. Uh, I've already used my Lord of Light out lanes. I'm gonna try and get another lock right here while we have that extra ball in our back pocket. That was pretty wild. And we'll start a mode since I'm on the right flipper here. So I'm gonna choose Tyrell on its own and just get some combos going and hit the lock targets and see if I can get my other lock slid for multi ball. And then maybe by that time I'm out of this mode and I can start two more. Oh, miss. Oh, that was bad. So we didn't complete anything. We didn't complete the mode, we lost our ball, and we didn't get our locks going. That's okay. So as you can see, one of the weaknesses of using Stark as a strategy for scoring big, we got some good value in our hurry ups. We got to the winner's come multi-ball, but I biffed on it and didn't get to that big super jackpot. So instead of having well over a billion now, we only have 600 million. But that's typically how it goes if you crash out of hand of the king so um again it, it might not be the best strategy for you but maybe it is maybe getting that kind of setup together makes more sense for you okay so this should be our last ball so now i want to maximize modes and hopefully get back to another multi-ball Hmm. Do Lannister and Tyrell because I'm, I'm missing right now, so maybe I'll accidentally hit some of those gold targets without draining. And then maybe we can get into our multi-ball while these are still got some good timers on them. They both have longer timers, remember. 
There we go, see? <laughs> the whole play field's lit up now. Oh boy. It's very crucial to lock in a backhand on the right ramp. Come on. There we go. Hit that other target. There we go. That's another lock. I pressure lock the ball first. We can get it there. Fifth. Got the hard lock target done. Let's get some more Lannister shots down. Oh, get up in there. <laughs> that was a good save there. Okay, so here's a good situation where you'd keep your gold. 15 million points, one bonus action. Yeah, I don't like that. Alright, so I think we got our third lock going. Ball two. Oh, lock. nope. Just ball two, just kidding. We want to pick Targaryen for sure. That mode is just worth so much. We can't avoid that. I'm almost done with Tyrell, so I'm going to pick them too. Get our play field validation back and see if we can't get our third lock lit. Oh yeah. We completed Tyrell, got our third lock. Not the greatest mode to bring in a multi-ball because there's really only a few shots I need to make, but again, they're valuable shots and they're gonna be multiplied now, so. I already did the ramps, gotta hit my orbits. That was bad. Hit it that time. Now I gotta hit the dragon to complete the move. Hopefully, multiply. Come on. Oh boy, don't die. This hurry up's gonna be real bad, even if I can collect it. Did I give it to me? Let's see. I think I might have. Yeah. It's only 33 million from that mode. That could have been way better. Oh well. Oh, get up there. Damn it. As you'll see on these last two parts of the walkthrough, I am very bad at multi-ball. <laughs> Alright, let's try and get another lock here. There we go. And now we're just trying complete mode. We've already been through two multi-balls. Now it's going to be pretty dang tough to start another one. So now we just want to get the hand of the king like we normally do. Um, let's try and finish off Lannister, Lawn, Targaryen too. Box. We got our play field validation back, I think. All our multipliers are unlocked now. So we're getting some good value here with 2x play field and the shot multipliers. And I'm dead. So risky, but worth it. So what we did, I think I did two, two or three multi balls. Enter your initials. Oh, we got a good winner is coming. Hurry up, I guess. Oh, that's the combined. So like the winner is coming champion on this is the combined value of all your winner is coming uh, hurry ups, I believe. So let's see what this is. Like 170, 180. Yeah, 186. So that would have been our base value of our super jackpot in Winter Has Come multi ball. So I think if we had that Amen. multiplied by 10 or hell, even 5, um, that's a whole bunch. Nine, 900 million for 5x, I think, and 1.8 for, uh, for 10 times. So that's essentially what you want to try to do if you're Stark is. Maximize those um, 
those hurry ups and cash in big on that winners come multi ball. Um, the ultimate, really, and we'll see later, is when you pick Greyjoy, house. complete House Stark, then do that strategy because you can also complete House Martell and get that add ball. So now you have Stark and Martell's power, and you can play that strategy out, and um, the payoff can be huge because you have that added. Um, safety Baratheon. net of the Atta ball in your pocket. So, all right, Brathian. It makes uh, wall multi ball easier to get to, but only the first time. It's just as hard the second go around. And as we saw before, uh, learning about wall multi ball last time, the second go around, the orbits stay open. So you have to like get lucky for the ball to fall into the pop bumpers and complete those lanes to be able to get back to it. But anyway. We only have to complete the top lanes four times instead of six um, to get to wall multi-ball the first time. So that stinks. But the real advantage is once you're in wall multi-ball, the jackpots and super jackpots are worth a lot more. The jackpots are worth about ten times more. The super jackpots aren't worth a ton more, but they are worth more. And they also increase at a greater rate as you go through different levels of the multi-ball from what I've... Uh, seen through my research of this house and that multi-ball so all right so we'll get this one started i'll play this one kind of kind of normal maybe concentrate on the orbits early on to get some lane completions um but just kind of get like whichever multi-ball you get to first play that one you can bring in two modes to a wall multi-ball too and i'll show you how we do that so we'll keep spamming orbits and Lighting houses. Okay, so we got Greyjoy and Baratheon lit. And I'm okay with those two modes for wall multi ball. So we'll just keep trying to work towards wall multi ball. Depending on what machine you got and how it plays, the um, left orbit is a pretty safe shot, especially from a backhand. So you can really have an extremely safe path to wall multi ball. You don't have to hit those dangerous stand-ups. Try and get this multiplied real quick just to get a little little extra value. There we go. That, that still wasn't as good as the base value of the Stark uh, winner is coming. Even at 3x. Huh. Somebody bring me a Star Wars and I'll get that good too. It won't take that long. Or someone close to me with one, do do a temp trade for eight months with me so I can uh, learn that Star Wars. What do we got here? Not sure how close we are, but... So again, you don't necessarily have to start this way with Baratheon, but I find it pretty easy path to a multi-ball. So now our multi-ball is lit at the dragon shot. Now I want to start the two modes. Don't start the multi-ball first. I'm going to start my two modes and now I'm going to hit the dragon shot. If I can. There we go. So now I got my two modes running with the multi-ball. So this can work just like uh, Blackwater. Um, and again, the, the multi-ball is worth more than if you don't pick Baratheon. That's really the main reason to pick it. You saw how safe that backhand was to start this multi-ball. Um, so it's not really for the for it being easier to get to multi-ball. It's the value of the multi-ball is better. And this is ugly. I need to get control of these balls here. And that's how quick Greyjoy ends because I didn't hit a single shot. And that's how quick that multi-ball ends. So if I want to save face at all in this mo in this mode, I'm gonna have to get a couple more a multiplier going. Hit the spinner a couple more times. Cash in on this mode at least. <laughs> Couldn't even do that. So that was bad. But you can kind of see where I was going with that. You, you, you can get to that wall multi-ball pretty quickly. Take a couple modes into it. Just from hitting the left orbit, you're going to be able to go into Baratheon and Greyjoy into that multi-ball. 
And again, if you're a better multi-ball player than me, that, that'll obviously go a lot better for you than 52 million. So, okay. So we got lock slit. We're just going to go towards Blackwater because you'll see. And while we play Baratheon a couple times, you'll see right here. Even though the orbits normally shouldn't be open, because I've played the multi-ball once, the ball just travels through. So I'm going to let this combat multiplier run out, and I'll show you from the right side. Oh, it does feed it there. From the, okay, so that's the, that's the ticket if you want to get back to this multi-ball. The right orbit does stay closed. I didn't think it did, but it does. So the next time, so if you want to get back to wall multi-ball, that's the way you got to go. But again, I wish it was easier to get to it every time instead of just the first time. That would make Baratheon a little bit more of a sleeper pick as a house. Because I know some people that are just out into that right orbit shot, they can hit that all day. Um, is your good mode to combine because it combines the orbits? Um, See if we can't play a single ball and blow it up. So that was a pretty, pretty quick Martell for 152. That's about as efficient as you can be without being risky at all. I want to get a play field multiplier going because look how high I got this value. I want to see if I can. I mean, hell, even just collecting this as is is a crazy good value. But that's what you get for going after play field multipliers. All right, so we'll try Baratheon again. Just kind of show, see if we can't do a little bit better with that strategy. Again, I don't have foolproof strategies for every house. I'm just kind of going through what, like make a case for any house, should you choose to go with that one, and maybe kind of get you going down a path that you can, you know, figure out a, a good way to score big with that house. These are just the ones that I've, I've uh, determined work best for me. So hopefully everyone's really excited to hear my foolproof, amazing Lannister uh, strategy that we're going to talk about here in a second. After we're done with this game of Baratheon, it's amazing. Oh no! Get out of there!
Oh boy. Alright, so we need to concentrate here. Get something going. Okay. So not going well this time. We're trying to get into a wall multi ball. Now it's ready. Oh boy. Too late on the Oh no. Take your time. Okay, we'll start with two moves and then one time it into the dragon. There's our playfield multipliers. This is, or sorry, our playfield validation. This is key. Because if I brick it off one of these stand ups and it goes straight down the middle, I'm going to be safe. Alright, so let's see if we can't do better this time. Rise now with Men of the Night's Watch. I'm gonna I'm gonna go after Greyjoy first because I had that 60 second timer of Baratheon just laying out there. So I'm gonna go after center ramp, right ramp, stuff like that. Okay. What? I should have gotten another Greyjoy. Oh well. I didn't get credit for the uh... one thing that I hate about wall multi ball is the ball save is crazy short. Well, I'm just trying to trap up balls, Greyjoy ends. And I guess I finished um, Baratheon by accident. <laughs> so now my goal is to chop away at this. Oh, 15 million for that multi ball. That was huge. So yeah, Baratheon's not my favorite house to pick. I am not good with it. I think Trent, Trent Augustine, I think he picks it a lot, so um, I'm going to have to pick his brain to see exactly like what path he takes when he, he grabs that house, because obviously whatever he picks usually works for him, so. Alrighty. Here comes everyone's favorite house. House Lannister. So. Lannister, we talked about getting the mystery uh, awards at the Dragon by collecting gold. Uh, Lannister gives you 500 gold right off the bat and gives you more gold for each target you hit. I'm not sure exactly how much. Um, doesn't really matter. <laughs> I mean, it's a minuscule amount. But here is the strategy for Lannister. It's the only strategy I know of. And you can do this with any house, but this award is pretty expensive, so you just get there quicker by collecting gold quicker with the Lannister power. Yeah, thanks so much, Lawrence, for the uh, subscribe subscription. So, uh, what we're going to do here, there is a bug in the game where I can't remember how much gold it is, but we're going to find out. At a certain amount of gold, I think it's in the 2,000 range maybe, uh, one of your options is to light one... Uh, 1x super jackpot at the battering ram. You select that mystery award. When you come out of mystery, do not hit the battering ram. Uh, work your locks and get into Blackwater Multi Ball. When Blackwater Multi Ball starts, that battering ram will still be lit for super jackpot, but instead of only being able to hit it once, you can hit it for the entirety of Multi Ball. So you have the entire Multi Ball to collect super jackpots. So that's the Lannister strategy. So let's see how good we can do this. We're Honestly, gonna. I wonder the easiest way to build up gold. Maybe if we. We can just obviously go after the targets. So let's try that the first game. And then the second game, we'll try and do it with a multi ball. So obviously, we can't get the mystery lit without hitting all the gold targets. So. <laughs> that was. Such a bad idea. Oh well. Let's just see if we can um, get that 1x super jackpot lit. So basically, long story short, I am all ears for a successful Lannister strategy. So we got our mystery lit. Let's see what our awards are. Hopefully it gives it to us right away. There we go. 1x super jackpot. So if we can get to multi ball, that's definitely worth losing a ball. Get the super jackpot. 
Now we can't drain, because that super jackpot will no longer be lit. There's one lock. Also, another thing that sucks about Lannister, it's the easiest mode to start. But playfield validation, we're good. It's the easiest mode to start, so there's no advantage to it being lit right away. It's it's tough. But Lannister sucks, so nobody likes Lannister anyway. Okay, another lock lit. I'm going to try and get Greyjoy going, get everybody's favorite stack going for multiball. Take my other lock. Okay, I got two locks. All two locked. Oh, I almost hit that. <laughs> oh no. Oh yeah. Oh, I got two nodes. Sweet. Lannister and Tyrell. Super jackpot ram all day. So, I've only done this a few times, but I'm pretty sure the whole multi-ball we can get super jackpots. So let's see. Oh yeah, it's still lit. And I'm not hitting it. <laughs> I'm hitting the center ramp with tons of skill. Oh yeah. We're getting super jackpots and there's regular jackpots still lit. And we're upping our play field multipliers. This is awesome. See if I can get one more. Oh yeah. <laughs> I got two. But that's pretty cool. It's a bug, but um So that's pretty much Lannister. So we'll We'll finish out this game and then we'll get a gray joy, because that's where all the all the goodies are at. So I'd say a fun thing to play with your friends is to do dollar games where everyone has to be Lannister and just see what people can come up with with Lannister scores. Um, so yeah, Lannister isn't that fun, but you can at least try that. Like I said, um, not sure. You probably have to get to mystery at least twice. Um, definitely you can't get it the first time with any other house. So you can get to that mystery with only losing one ball and get that light super jackpot and blow up a multi-ball. I mean, it'd be pretty sweet. But, um, yeah. So that's about all I got for Lannister. So anybody that's got uh, anything to say for Lannister, have at it. Okay, Greyjoy. This is a house that you can go about it a million different ways. So I'm just going to kind of do a couple things that I've been um, playing with recently and that's go after um, Stark right away and beat that in single ball and then have that big multiplied uh, or sorry big uh, w a winner is coming uh, power and then kind of play the game like I normally do get in a multi ball um, I try not to get 
Martell done with Greyjoy until I've been through Hand of the King. I know that sounds weird, but um, I feel like you can make hay by playing the other houses beforehand. So let's get after it. Another thing I like to do is... And something I did for a, a long time, which isn't a bad strategy at all. While you have this playfield validation, and you got these free pot shots of these dangerous shots down here, take them. Because my ball save just started. I mean, I didn't do much with the, the few shots I had, but... I used to play where... I would try and get my Lord of Light, my Lord of Light lit right away. That way, it has some security, and I only have to worry about one drain instead of three. But you'd be surprised. So we, we actually lit Tyrell really quickly. So let's see if we can't complete that, because um, that's a pretty big power to have. But again, I was just. Use my playfield validation to get some stuff going on the lower playfield. And um, I was able to get Tyrell lit, get my Lord of Light Outlands going. I didn't beat the auto plunge there. That's bad news, Bears. Now I gotta play careful. Another. Um, and, and we'll talk about this in a second while I can do it right now. But um, in Greyjoy, one of the reasons why. I like to pick it over Martell, um, and it's probably on the same level as Tyrell for me, is yes, you don't have any modes lit right away. It completes Greyjoy for you right away, but it also gives you swords lit at the right ramp right away. So you collect that sword and now you're at the 4x multiplier level when you might be playing somebody that never even completes a mode. So they're locked in at those 3x values, so when you get to your multi-ball, just like they did, you're gonna you're not gonna be limited by only 3x multipliers. You're gonna be limited by 4x multipliers just from hitting the right ramp right away when you start. So that's pretty big to me. If you have a nice long multi ball, your average score coming out of that because of those additional multipliers that you have that your opponent doesn't, that's gonna increase your score greatly. So that's why I would try to get a strategy together for competition for Greyjoy. Um, and you might be pleasantly su surprised with how you do with it. Um, there's really no rhyme or reason as to which houses I pick. I just try to have at least one lit, you know, before I go into multi-wall. Um, preferably one with a longer mo or mode timer. Um, you don't have to worry about completing Greyjoy in this one, obviously. So, uh, most of the other timers are nice and long, so it doesn't really matter which mode you pick. Um, usually pick Lannister going into multi-ball, obviously, because it has a bunch of dangerous shots. But, um, if it happens to not be lit when you start multi-ball... Just pick whatever you can. Okay. Try and get this Tyrell completed and get closer to our multi ball. I wouldn't mind taking this into multi ball just so we can have some peace of mind, get another multiplier. And then have our inlay multiplier power. Well, I was trying to play safe by starting multi ball, but I can't hit it. Okay, start multi ball. No way. God. Okay, that was really bad, but I was trying to decide whether to complete Tyrell mode. Then start multi-ball with starting a new fresh mode with having completed Tyrell or just start multi-ball to guarantee that I finish Tyrell without draining. Well, I tried to go the safe route and just start multi-ball, but I bricked and drained because of it. So that's just what I was trying to do there. So now we still don't have Tyrell complete. So now I'm probably behind the eight ball if I'm in a tournament right now. I'm probably pretty far behind depending on who I'm playing in the situation. So... What I would try to do here is get back into Tyrell. Well, sorry. Since it's going to be our third lock, I'm going to pick a different mode. Hopefully Lannister will light 
on our first shot up the middle here. So we'll see. Because that's going to be our third lock. In the meantime, I'm going to try and... Oh, should have done that. <laughs> Not allowed to do that. Okay. Get Stark. That's not lit yet. But Lannister is. Okay. So we're going to do Lannister because I'm only one shot away from completing Tyrell. I can do that easily when I come out of multiball. I want to take this harder mode into multiball and see what I can't get going here. But again, your results may vary because I am very bad at multiball. Give me that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so if there's ever a multi-ball heavy game that you can choose to play me against, pick it. Because I am terrible. At multi-balls. So, let's go with that again. We're going to play Greyjoy a few times. So again, multiple ways to go, but you can use your your playfield validation time to get get some safety nets going here. Oh. thing I like to do you can hit the drop targets it'll fly all the way over and hit the lock targets but I usually only do that if all of them are there you really can't count on that as much if there's not all three of the drop targets up or at least I can't just trying to get my Tyrell lit again like last time seem to have One more time. Oh. So, with those outlanes lit, I'm being able to play pretty risky. I'll usually just keep going after what I want to go after that's risky until I lose those outlanes. I think I'm on too dangerous, too, so I gotta be careful. I'm almost a Baratheon now, too. There we go. So, I know that because I have two lights in front of the um, Baratheon targets and I haven't been in any modes or anything, it's, it's telling me that I've completed the drop targets twice. And I know I've done that in single ball play, so I know I'm just a couple drop targets away from lighting Baratheon. So I'm going to try that first before I start playing my modes and locking balls. Yeah, thanks for coming, Ronald. There we go. So we lost our Lord of Light, but, I mean, look at all the shit we got going. So that was a pretty, pretty worth it, in my opinion. So let's let our, let's get our first lock. I'm going to play Tyrell, because it's going to force us to hit more lock targets. Oh, boy. Oh, look at that catch. Alright, remember, we gotta get all the purple shots, so I'm gonna hit that dragon on this next plunge. Oh, 
Oh no! That's the only way you're not safe on a uh, playfield validation. If it bricks and goes in the out lane, you're done. Only it'll only save you if you go straight down the middle, because those out lane switches are major switches. That's okay. Now we're gonna use this playfield validation to get another lock lane. Not sure if this is our third or second. Oh, it's our third, because all the jackpots are lit, blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm going to get Tyrell going, because if we can get that, that in-lane multiplier. If you complete a mode while playing Greyjoy in uh, multiball, you get that power right away. So theoretically, if you were playing Martell during a multiball and completed it during multiball, you get the edible during that multiball. So just remember that. You get the powers immediately. The second you complete the mode, you have that house's uh, advantage. Alright, so we got our dragon shot. Now we need to hit lock targets. Let's see. Right ramp and then the lock targets again. Lock targets. Got it. Did I get it? Yeah. So now you can see we got the in lane multipliers lit. So let's get a multiplied jackpot here. Oh. Well, there's one. Back to our jackpots. All our combo multipliers are pretty much lit, so I'm just trying to collect these jackpots as quickly as possible. And don't let those combos fall out. Ooh, I'm getting some lucky shots here. Oh boy. That was pretty good, though. Well, 284. Could have been better, but that's okay. But now we got that Tyrell power. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go Martell, because this is a mode that can be, if you got multipliers going, which we do, can be pretty powerful. So let's see what we got here. Multipliers about to run out, so I'm going to go after the batting ram. If I can do it quickly. Oh, it saved it. So I had 10x on every shot if you saw that. So that would have made Martell crazy valuable if I would have been able to keep it to play. Lawrence, thanks for the sub. That's a cool uh, emoji there. Is that what you get for subbing? That's pretty cool. All right, so ball three. I want to complete another house here because then we'll light our extra ball. Obviously not the case in tournament play, but and my play field multiplier is lit. I'm going to try and get that going with a couple shots and then get back into our modes and see if we can get some good value here. Got 22 million for that one shot. Let's see what we got here. Ooh, light super jackpot. That's what we want, ladies and gents. So basically, if light 1x super jackpot is ever your mystery award, always pick it. Let's see if we can't get a big Martell mode going here. Oh, brick. So I lost my play field, but let's see if we can't just time this mode. Right. 
five X. Woo! That was a pretty big collect, I think. Extra ball is lit. Not sure if it'll tell me now that I what my Martell mode completion was, because it kinda got interrupted. Oh yeah, 229 for Martell. Hells yeah. So that was a big collect on Martell. Just like I said, we're getting to those higher level multipliers quicker. I want to get that extra ball like now. Shoot. But yeah, you can see how you can just use those modes to your advantage even though we didn't do terribly well in multi-ball. I got almost just that much from a multiplied Martell mode, just because I knew how the mode worked. I knew how to keep the multipliers going. The what up, gun nut? All right. So we got a couple houses left. Uh, let's let's go into Tyrell. Choose uh, You can't choose Targaryen. Um, not quite sure why that is. I think maybe Dwight was thinking that Targaryen currently occupies the Iron Throne and you're trying to defeat all these other houses and get to them um, and take the Iron Throne from them. Again, I'm not really sure if that's the case or why he chose to not be able to have uh, Targaryen be chosen at the beginning of the game, but um, you can't choose them at the start of the game. You can choose any other house with them. Alright. Tyrell. Oh, great question, Chris. So, Chris wants to know, um, when I'm picking modes, like when I hit the mode shot and I'm selecting my modes to start, when you cycle through the modes, they show on the screen what modes you currently have, or the shields light up the bottom as you cycle through them. I always look at the shield at the bottom, because I'm not sure why, but I started doing that it was easier for me to cycle through them quickly and know, like, because it's faster to see colors, I guess, than read. So I'd be able to get my my two modes that I wanted to combo together quicker by just going by this and watching the lights. So, so what do you do, Chris? Do you look at the the lights down below or do you uh, read the screen? Okay, so Tyrell gives you the in lane multipliers. What those do is. Every time you run through one of those in lanes, it lights up all your shot multipliers and increases them by one. So this is a very, very significant advantage because if you can imagine, you don't need to hit any certain shot to light up another shot to be multiplied. You just need to hit a shot that feeds an in lane, switch it over to that one. When it runs through it, every shot will be lit and multiplied. So if you remember on Stark mode, if you just span the center ramp, using any other house, that shot's not going to be multiplied because it's not going to let you multiply a shot over and over again that you're hitting. Um, but if you're Tyrell and it keeps going through that lit in lane, it's going to relight that center shot. So let's, um, maybe just to show how this works, we'll, we'll light Stark mode, play that, and see how much we can get that um, multiplied. But really all it's going to do if we play that early is it's going to get us to 3x shot multiplier because we're limited to that. So maybe we'll hold off on that, and if we complete a few houses, we'll um, we'll circle back to Stark and see if we can't build that up. Yeah, uh, I don't know about you, Chris, but I'm a very slow reader, so I uh, I see the I see the lights better than I do the the words. <clears throat> so yeah. You always want to be rolling through those in lanes when you're House Tyrell. So you can see, I just hit a shot and turned off some of the multipliers. But when you roll through the in lane, they all come back on and increase. So they're all at the max value of 3x. Had we had more multipliers unlocked, they'd be at 4x right now. One additional advantage that I'm pretty sure this house has, and I'll try and do this too. Once you get to the uh, max multiplier level, I believe the Tyrell house will allow you to increase it one more from 5x. So 
not play field, but shot multiplier, you can get it to 6x. But don't hold me to that. That might only be during Hand of the King. During Hand of the King, both the in lanes are lit, which serves the same purpose, but it might also let you advance the shot multiplier to 6x. Um, so, so anybody in chat, if you know for sure, um, I forgot to confirm on my end when I was doing my research whether one of Tyrell's advantages is not only the in-lane multiplier, but also that if you um, if you unlock all your multipliers and keep running through those in-lanes, I think it stops at 6x instead of 5. Twenty six X, okay. So So how would that work? <laughs> so will that be No? Or is it just add one? Because I don't know how you would have a twenty six X shot there, Chris. Um Cause you you could have what? Six X Shot multiplier and 4x play field, that's 24. So I wonder how it would get to 26. Maybe it just adds one more x? I don't know. That's weird, though, that you saw 26 one time. I wonder if that was actually what it was or a bug that needs squashed and it wasn't showing the correct mixed value. 24 sounds right. So you could have like a 6x shot multiplier and a 4x play field. But remember, the multiplied numbers always show what your total multiplied value is. So not only your shot multipliers, but also your play field multipliers. It's a mixed multiplied shot. All right, so let's try and get some modes completed so I can test this theory here. crazy saving skills. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and complete start because I'm just trying to get more multipliers unlocked. Take my time here. Let it go. Let it go. Come on. Sorry, not trying to be boring, just want to prolong this game as much as possible so we can try and debunk this, or just see if this theory of mine is correct. Oh, brutal! Alright, we'll go Tyrell again, and like I said, we're trying to unlock all the multipliers for Tyrell. To see if those in lanes will let us go to 6x instead of 5x. House <clears throat> but I'm pretty sure it does. For sure it does in Hand of the King. One time I do look at the screen, Chris, and read it is when I'm trying to pass. So I just want to make sure it says pass before I select. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. Oh shit. 
Oh no. Jesus. One multiplier unlocked, so we can get to four now. No way. Sick. We're gonna let this time out and get back into it. All the <laughs> timer for us. Oh! Also. <laughs> I'm terrible. A way to tell that a uh, if you don't want to look at the screen to see what the timer's at on a mode, the mode's insert will start to flash really fast. So that's when you know the timer's about to run out. Alright. Let's get back in there. We'll start Greyjoy and Tyrell. Even though we only need to complete one to unlock all the multipliers. So I need to hit right now? ramp and right ramp and lock targets. Okay, shots. Sit! There we go. Get up there. There we go. Tyrell done. So let's see what our multipliers are at. 4x. What are they at? 5x. Still at 5x. Oh boy. Just continue to spam the... Nope, it's staying at five. Okay. So that means that Hand of the King is the only uh, point in the game where using the lit in lanes will increase your combat multiplier by one more. So. Yeah. Yeah, Chris, me too, man. That's why I um, I usually won't do the Lannister Greyjoy stack in a multi ball. I usually try to do like Baratheon or uh, Tyrell. Or even Martell to, you know, get some, a longer mode timer in there. Okay. So ignore me on the extra Tyrell house power of combo multipliers by six. That is only in Hand of the King when both the inlanes are lit flashing. That's when you can get 30x instead of 25x as your uh, max multiplied shot. So we're going to do everybody's favorite stack. Um... Yeah, and just remember to keep these in lanes on the side where the ball's going through. Let's see what we can do here. complete either mode standard operating procedure for me We got 
got tons of playfield multipliers. Okay, so let's go for Greyjoy. Oh, I missed it. Okay. I got that ball locked so I can get my playfield validation going. Alright, take your time, dummy. Boom. How much is that worth? Woo! Oh! Oh! Hit the battering ram. Oh, yeah. Oh, and I lost it. So, yeah, Greyjoy, if you're just playing around for fun at home, definitely practice it. Because if you like to go to tournaments and stuff, I would highly suggest trying to get a good tournament strategy together for Greyjoy because it's just more fun. It gets boring after a while to just do that same old song and dance with Martell. So, Greyjoy and Tyrell, sorry. We've been through both of those. So, yeah, just play around with it and see what you can come up with. Hey, Birdo, man. Go get one. This game is fun. Thanks for watching, though, man. You've been around for... Most, if not all of them, so thanks, dude. Okay. Martell. Not much to talk about here, but what we're going to talk about is maybe there's some times where you want to save your added ball. Don't use it. And there might be times where you actually want to drain your ball. Not drain your ball on purpose, but actively avoid a multi-ball so that when you start your next ball, you'll have your added ball back. So, we'll kind of play this how I normally do. Get some modes lit. Going to our first multi ball. Yep, Chris, great point. Um, I like to check on my spinner value after a big Blackwater multi-ball. I like to, um, but yes, also starting Martell mode um, is another good way to go. One strategy I played for a while while using Martell was I tried to complete two modes before my first multi-ball. So that's more to what I'll, I'll try and do right here. Complete two modes before you're in multi-ball. Complete the other two while you're in multi-ball. Then Hand of the King is lit right away when you come out of multi-ball. Uh, but obviously that's a little risky. If you don't get to that that first multi-ball, then it could screw you. Because that's tons of points you're leaving on the table. But completing a couple modes, get your multipliers up, could make that multi-ball humongous. So if you got a long road to climb, it might be worth that risk. That's real bad, because if you drain with your Lord of Lights lit, they are not lit on your next ball. That is no fun. We definitely don't want to lock our third ball here. I'm trying to backhand that sucker. Oh no.
So this time we have no choice because we're on our third lock. And we're going to have to start multi-ball. And player moves. So we'll play Martell for the rest of the time. And just talk through different strategies I do during this. Oh yeah, that's sweet. So the, the final shot to complete Martell is also can be the center ramp. So if you do that as your fourth house, you start handing the king right away, and that's just great. You're just continuing that, that great play right into another multi-ball. Your multipliers are probably going crazy, and that's nuts. The only problem is had you used your add a ball before that, you won't be able to use it in the hand of the king. You only get it once per ball which I'm sure everybody knows now but once per ball so if you know that you're coming out of Blackwater multi ball and you're gonna have hand of the king lit you might hang on to that edible and don't use it during Blackwater but hand of the king say if you can get to the first level of super jackpots before you use your add ball that's good stuff that's usually what I aim for obviously you try to do as best you can but oh you dummy Okay, we went right back into a mode, so I'm going to try and stack everything I can together. I didn't mean to complete that yet, but pretty good completion. I'm going to let the 3x run out and get it restarted. Don't die. Boo. That might have been ball 3 with extra ball in it. Nope. We still had extra ball, so that's our first goal. Thank you, sir. And then right back at it with a, a 220 something Stark. So you guys can see that keeping those multipliers going is crazy. So we got our extra ball. Um, we only have Lannister left before Hand of the King. Not the best mode in the world to, ooh, light super jackpot. But now we're on a new ball, so if we get multi-ball during this ball, we get our head of ball back. Oh! <laughs>
Oh boy. Oh yeah, that was sick. Keeping all these shots multiplied is good. This is another good mode I'm having here. What I kind of did was now, I got four houses completed, but I'm still in Lannister mode. So, but that's okay. I just want to... I wonder what happens when I bring this in the hand of the king. Oh. Alright, so we're sitting on our extra ball here. Oh yeah, dude. I, I, uh, Chris, I've already played a lot of Star Wars. I've only played it in tournaments um, here locally. Uh, but I did early code. I had it for one night at my house, so I played it all night. And um, I loved it, even then. So, um, it, it, and it's only gotten better. So, um, I'd really love to get one of those at some point. Um, Hopefully, maybe via temporary trade with someone locally, or uh, maybe just bite the bullet and get one. But um, I was just kind of wondering if I would. Uh, I probably wouldn't play Game of Thrones nearly as much, so I wonder if. But we would never sell this, so. But we got plenty of room, too, so. I'm sure at some point I'll, I'll have one, at least temporarily, and I can um, really dive deep into it, because that, that game's great. Adrenaline rush, just like this one. Okay, hand of the king. We don't need to do anything fancy. We're at the start of our ball, so we'll have our add a ball when we go in. Some sneaky stuff I've done before is get a couple pot shots on the uh, <laughs> um, on the battering ram to get multipliers going, but you definitely don't want to mess around with that. And I definitely don't want to drain trying to get into this either. There we go. We'll talk about the Hand of the King rules uh, uh, next time. But essentially, depending on which houses you bring in, it does something different to Hand of the King. And, and it tells you right when you start it during the startup sequence. But So with Wildfire Lit, it's not a bad idea to uh, uh, get after the battering ram right away. We can get we can get to 3x multipliers here pretty quick. There we go. Okay. Now we're getting some pretty pretty good value here. Now, that was real early for the add ball, but what you gonna do? Jackpot's ready. Oosh. That was a good one. Damn it. Okay, modes. Ooh, I went right into a multi ball. That's awesome. Okay, the key is here. Keep the multipliers going. Something you don't see too often here. Your 5x place. So not really much else to go for here than maybe let's see what spinner does here. Oh boy. Oh, that 
that was terrible. Now I can't restart once it was at 5x. So we back to zero. That's why I made the argument to try and keep it under 5x play field. Because you can wait for it to go out, smack the rim once, and get it back to... Uh, oh, we can do... Winner has come. Even though we don't have an add ball still, we can... Uh, Close to any multipliers, but hey, we can get. Ooh, extra balls lit. That's good. I'm extra ball, but I'm just locking the ball real quick to get my play field back. <laughs> Chris, that would be crazy. Being in a tournament, your life on the line, and uh, so you're saying reach time. over and and take your your left hand and reach over the game, and that's actually like it might be perfect timing if you're on a trap. Let go. That's uh, that's pretty funny. Cool. So you like uh, you like Game of Thrones a little more than uh, Star Wars? Yeah, I, on the surface. I, uh, I like the rules of the multipliers for um, Star Wars. It's a lot more hectic and much more difficult for me to wrap my head around it, you know, moving those specific shots around, whereas Game of Thrones, you can kind of get them all to be that way. Um, so, yeah, I think it will be a good mix of similar rules and thought process of strategy, but, you know, a whole different way to go about it. Um, cool. Well... That's pretty much all I had for tonight, guys. We're just going through the houses, checking out their advantages and different strategies you might have. Um, again, um, I've grown to like Greyjoy House and Tyrell House more than Martell because my multi-ball game's pretty lacking, and even with that crutch of an Anna ball, I still wasn't getting the results um, from using that house consistently than other ones, even though it was by far our best game than I hear, though. <laughs> um, I just... I guess one was out of boredom and another one just, yeah, I just wasn't getting the consistent multi-ball results that I wanted. So I felt like I could get some good base cheap points from using Greyjoy or Tyrell and then um, just kind of going from there. I think I, I was starting to win more consistently in competition by doing it that way. But again, everybody's process is going to be different. So I just want to get that all that information to you guys and let you uh, decide how you want to... Uh, best tailor the game to your your strong suits so again um thanks for watching we will um our last part is just kind of be a overall fun let's try and see how high we can score um next week it's going to be we're just going to talk about the hand of the king real quick and go over each house and what they bring in just so we can get it documented and part of the walkthrough and then i, I won't talk about the final wizard mode iron throne because i want to leave that as a surprise for people that haven't been there yet um so yeah, we won't have any spoilers in that regard, but, um, so yeah, we'll briefly cover Hand of the King, and then we will go through 
and just try and blow the game up. Cool. Well, thanks again, everybody, for watching. Loved all the support. Love all the comments. I'm so glad everyone uh, has uh, found some uh, found some good stuff in this videos. Whether you know the game or don't know the game at all, um, I think everybody's been able to find something that they didn't know before, which is great. So, thanks again, everybody. Thanks for watching. Peace.